French practitioner who has been working in the United Delta for the past 10 years. He was recently offered a scholarship by Harvard University to study at the John F. Kennedy School of Government under its executive education program. His robust journalism portfolio has been featured on several local and international platforms including Al Jazeera, the BBC World Service, CNN, the UN blog Geneva and New York, the World Economic Forum Agenda, the Huffington Post US and South Africa, CNBC Africa, UNICEF Voices of Youth to mention a few. In addition to his work in journalism, Ebenezer has also been very active in community development across the Niger Delta in the past decade. He led an anti-examer practice campaign in 2009 called uh, Read Not Runs. Uh, he organized TEDx Youth at Ordnance Road, which was West Africa's only TEDx youth event in 2014. He led the Potharkat Global Shepherds Club in 2016, served in a technical committee of the River State Government SDG's office in 2017, served on the steering committee of the hashtag Not Too Young to Run campaign in 2018. And uh, also, he's uh, got two nominations for the Future Awards Africa in 2016 and 2018. We can now guess lectures online journalism at the Ken Sarabiwa Polytechnic and he's a member of the International Jury for the 2019 Association for International Broadcasting Awards holding in London. Ebenezer Wikina, welcome to Canva tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me. Nice and thanks to our listeners as well. A reminder, today on the show we're discussing, uh, today is a part of the Canvas Champion Series, and particularly youths contributing to Niger Delta Development is what we're discussing on the show today. So, uh, Ebenezer, I'd like to start on this, on this note. Uh, I mean, the, the script I read out just a while ago asked the question, you know, somewhat, you yeah. know, what one thinks when one hears the expression, Niger Delta Youth. Now, besides being a Niger Delta Youth yourself, yeah. uh, you have several fora that afford you the opportunity to interact with several persons and get their perspectives as well, Nigerians and non-Nigerians alike. Yeah. So, it's a two-pronged question. When you hear Niger Delta Youth, what comes to mind? From your experience and interactions with a host of other persons, when they hear Niger Delta Youth, what comes to their minds? Okay, L let me start. Let me start from the last one. So, in speaking with other people, um, I mean, across the country, across um, most parts of the world, you notice that for people in Nigeria, they just feel like anything Niger Delta means oil, right? And then oil means money. So they feel like, ah, these people have so much money to spend around and splash around. And somehow they also have a feeling that many young people in this region, have, they, they feel very entitled, right? Because, I mean, we have oil. Because we have oil, give us X, give us Y, it's in our land, it's our soil, etc. So they begin to feel like oh, we're very entitled people. Most times, in most, in most parts of, of Nigeria, they feel like we're very lazy, right? Which I have come to see over time that even though this is true for quite a number of young people in the region, there are also several young people who are working very hard, you know, starting businesses, having their own MSMEs, running companies, you know, I mean, just, just doing something, right? The typical Niger Delta young person is very hard working. And the, the, the food we eat alone, you know, having a, a, fresh, a fresh fish and everything already adds to the minerals and proteins that we have in our, in our body needed to, to have energy. So we do have a lot of energy. It's just that most people tend to direct that energy to wrong causes, you know, mm. as opposed to the positive ones. But from my own personal experience, I've seen so many Niger Delta young people flourishing in the region, in Nigeria, and most parts of the world. So I, I actually see the Niger Delta youth as someone who can be very enterprising. That's what comes to mind when you hear Niger Delta youth. Yes. A uh, reminder once again, our topic today is youths contributing to Niger Delta development. Is that really a thing, uh, youths contributing? Because when you hear development, when you hear policy, when you hear policy formulation, policy implementation, when you hear government, when you hear you know, uh, mm. people accomplishing stuff. You you think, uh, you know, much older persons. You think people in the political stratosphere yeah. who are much very much advanced in age. You don't think youths. You don't think young persons. Uh, and Niger Delta youths really in a position to bring about the development of the Niger Delta. Uh, and by that, I'm asking: Do they have capacity, and are they doing it? Yes. Um, the question is: The answer is yeah, yes and yes because. Um, I had I'd spoken with um, quite a number of young people across the Niger Delta region, and I've even engaged with them personally. Um, 
I, I came on air, I think, a couple of months ago to discuss the Not Too Young to Run bill and then the, the success of, of the bill. Mm. I mean, I'd been, I'd been with that campaign for, for a very long time. I began from, you know, social media, chit chats, and then be, be, became a big, big campaign that even, you know, moved up to the point of being a bill that was signed in, in, into law and became an act. Now, I saw all of that happen that was really championed by young people. I mean, even though we had a lot of help from people who are currently in the House and Senate, most of the gathering, the organizing, all of that, you know, force that came together was just young people, pretty much, who just wanted to say, okay, I mean, we, we have the power to vote. Why can't we be voted for? You know, and so we began, whether it was tweet chats and Facebook lives and things like that, you know, and then Yaga, the organization who was um, running on the, the campaign, you know, did a lot of work in getting young people all across the 36 states, rallying together, whether it's having matches or writing petitions or all of those kind of things. Yeah, but that's the thing. It, it, it was YouTube we across. Had, <laughs> we had them as well in the Niger Delta. Of course. Yes. Yeah, but then again, it was a lot of views from <laughs> across the country. And a lot of views as well in the Niger Delta. So we, we, also, had, we also had young people in Rivers. I mean, Chief Sin, if he's listening, Chief Sin Wainwu was very amazing in, in gathering young people in River State. And then we had people in Bielsa State, Delta State, who all came together as well to write petitions. I mean, they joined the national movement pretty much. Right petitions and all. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying um, young people are in the region are, are as engaged in you know civic governance and everything as as they should be. But I'll say that it's not as bad as most people paint it. Most people just say, oh, young people in this region are not doing anything. They're just there, you know, lazy people on their own. But I've seen a lot of change. I've seen a lot of ex examples of people who are doing the correct thing. So I personally believe that there's still a lot of work to be done. But there is there is a sign that if we put in the work, they will get will get so much so much result. Now this might sound like an unfair question to you, okay. you know, but <laughs> I don't in, in any way intend to be unfair to you. Okay. But uh, w once again, considering that you've done plenty, a lot of work across the country, you just gave one example right now. The not on the wrong movement, where yeah. you have to work with a lot of youths from across the country, different mm -hmm. states, for all th all the states actually. Yeah. That's um, yeah. So would you say that Niger Delta youth? Yeah. Obviously. Things across the country and the way they should be, even with youths being active. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that youths in Lagos, youths in Kano, youths in uh, Adama, youths in Inugu can do a lot better than they are doing right now yeah. for varying reasons. Yeah. But if you compare what youths in the Niger Delta are doing mm. with whatever capacities or resources are available to them, mm. and youths in other parts of the country, if you do a comparison, mm. how well would you say Niger Delta youths are doing? Should I do like a rate of maybe like? One to ten. That's fine. That's whatever works for you. I would say we are at six, six somewhere between six and seven, um, because let's not also forget the fact that uh, you're doing a comparison right now with yes. using other states. So, yes. so okay, compare with what state, for example. Um, I mean, people tend to compare us with Lagos a lot, and I okay. and I don't like that because I mean these are very, two different environments, business environment, you know, e everything, climate, everything is, is different. Okay. But I was, I was just saying, before you caught me, I was just saying that we always forget that the Niger Delta region has the highest youth unemployment in the whole of Nigeria. Okay. Right? And there are those who would disagree with you without that. It does. I mean, there's no. data, and the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics had released data to, to defend this. The ILO as well had, had done um, research and findings. So there's data to, to, to back up that claim. But for me, I, I'm even more worried about the fact that you have a region that is blessed with... I mean, the nation's resources. We, I mean, most of what runs Nigeria pretty much comes from the region. So then you begin to wonder why is it that the same region that pretty much, in quotes, runs the country, you know, has its young people not having jobs and things to do. Mm. So for that, I'm not trying to say let's blame the older generation or blame the government like we always do. But I'll say there's a lot of... Um, a lot of work that needs to, to be put into like our educational system, whether it's say, you know, our after school programs, the NYIC, for, for, for example. Um, I mean, whether or not it's working or not is another argument for another day, but there, there's so much that still needs to be done into those kind of programs yeah. that will even support the young people. Because to be, to be fair, all we just give them now is an education that pretty much was made for a world that never exists anymore, right? So the world has moved on to other things. I mean, ICT and technology and everything. And so we are not even giving them the support structures as we are supposed to. So I, I would say it's unfair to judge the young people just alone based on you know, the, the things we are seeing currently. Again, on the side of the young people, I still believe that our environment, our background should never be an excuse for whatever it is that we want to do. And so there are people, young people all over the world who are 
I mean, shaking barriers, breaking mountains, and, and doing amazing things wherever they are with the little resources they have around them. So as a young person in Nigeria's region, you don't have an excuse. I mean, just saying that because they are not giving you certain allocation from your community or certain thing that you're, you're expecting from, from the chief should make you then go to look for vices, you know, whether it's in stealing or kidnapping or whatever. All of those things, as we know, always don't end well, mm -hmm. right? So there are other positive ways, and there are people all over, I mean, me, for, for example, it's not like I've done, I've, I mean, if you read my, my profile, you, you'll feel like I've studied everywhere in the world, ETC, I've lived in Potaka all my life. I was born here, bred here, stayed here for, I mean, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still here in Potaka, right? But even living here in Potaka, I've been able to study using the internet, build networks using the internet, work on community projects, again, using the internet to mobilize people, work, work together, connect with people, just using the things we have, our mobile phones, the things we have around us that we think are trivial things, mm. using those things to build my, my capacity, build my resume and all of that. So I, I believe that young people can do a lot more, but let's also not forget that the structures need to be put in place to support them. I'd like to refer to the topic once again, okay. which is uh, youth contributing to Niger Delta development. Yeah. Uh, I, d I do perceive that not a few youths are convinced that the one way that they can contribute to the development, and that whether or not they're contributing to the general development or their personal development, mm. is not a matter entirely. Yeah. But they are convinced that the one way, and possibly even for them the only way, they can make that contribution is by actively being involved in, in politics. politics. Yeah, which uh, is a very wrong notion. So, so, <laughs> so they, 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 are, they attach, they find one, some honorable someplace, some political godfather or yeah. strong man in the community, and attach themselves to him yeah. and do his bidding, whatever become that is. Or something, exactly, yeah. in, in hope that they'll become SA or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. and then climb the political ladder. Mm -hmm. So, and as I said a while ago, when we talk development, mostly across Nigeria, but in the Niger Delta for the purpose of this conversation, yeah. you have people thinking, oh, much older people, people in the political class, in political bracket. Is that the only or maybe even the most effective way that Niger Delta youth can bring about development in the Niger Delta? engaging and being actively involved in politics? No. That is one way, but I believe there are several other ways to contribute to the Niger Delta region. Um, yeah, politics seems to be a very strong path because it feels a bit like decisions that can be made in that, in that circle can impact a lot of people you know, in a very short time. That's why most people feel like oh, that's the only way to change, to change the country. But there's a whole lot. I mean, the fact that we all have our own unique giftings and talents the fact that we even have things like Facebook and all these things that are making us connect these days. I mean, if Mark Zuckerberg was waiting for the U.S. government, pretty much to... Well, if he was waiting to become governor. Or waiting to become governor, exactly. <laughs> or waiting to become governor of the state, really. I'm not sure we would have the, the technology that we have today. So I believe everyone has unique giftings and talents that we can all contribute you know, when we all put it together to make our, our, our society better. Yes, young people are encouraged and should be encouraged to get into you know, politics and civic engagement and make sure that they are, they, are, they, are, they are active. But that should not be, the, in fact, the problem we have in Nigeria is that most people feel that is the only way to solve our problems. But mm. then we have a lot of the teacher, the policeman, whatever role you have, whatever, whether you work in the civil service, wherever you are, you actually have the chance to change things, you know. It's just making sure that you do the right thing even when anyone is, is watching you. So, yeah, there are other ways to, to, to save. All right, join the conversation right now, if you will. We know we did, uh, you know, we have very limited time on the show today, but let's hear it still. Uh, the lines are open, 0844 uh, 0817 0002 0002 0002 0007 Ah, we've got a call already. Hello, Canvas, and are you open? Hello, Daniel, good evening. All right, go ahead. Yes, my greetings also to your guest. Hi, good evening. During the time you play the audio, I have uh, the person, I don't know whether that is your guest, saying that it is uh, a fully. He did not put it exactly that way. For Niger Delta youth to destroy their environment to prove a point, which I agree with him. I want to ask, where did we get it wrong? And how can we come out of this mess? Thank you. Okay, uh, he's making reference to something that did, you know, come up earlier mm -hmm. on. Yes, yeah. But uh, is that something you'd want to address? <laughs> it, it feels like a question that I have, like several layers and everything. Mm. Where did we get it wrong? I mean, there's a lot of you can you can refer to several things. I like to refer to education because I, I work in education as well, and I've seen that 
there's a lot we can do with you know restructuring our educational curriculum and making sure that people are learning the things that are relevant for the labor market today. So uh, there, there, are, there are several aspects to it, whether it's in funding and everything. There are several aspects where I, I would say we got it wrong the moment we stopped learning, we stopped, we stopped growing. You know, we just we, we stuck to the things that we've been doing before and passed it down to the next generation and thought that would be the way to, to solve the problem. Mm. Yeah. Also, uh, in the uh, opener to the conversation, the narrative I read, uh, the, you know, the intro to the yeah. conversation today yeah. was something about, uh, uh, something, ab I can't find the term exactly right now, but something uh, about, you know, doing things differently yeah. uh, on common approaches, yeah. on, on yeah. you know, common practices being employed the world over mm -hmm. and some are employing as well in the United Delta. Yeah. So, when I asked a while ago if politics is the way to go, you said it's one of the ways. But you, you mentioned as well, if you mm. want a civil service, if you're in this, if mm -hmm, you're in that. Mm -hmm. But those are still all conventional means anyways. Yeah, you know? yeah. So what are some of these unconventional means, un uncommon means that can be employed by Niger Jones to use to change the narrative and bring it about that development? Yeah, so, so one thing that young people in the Niger Delta region had not learned well over, over time, when I mean young people, I mean young people in various generations, had been how to formally and effectively engage in dialogue you know most times when we have a grievance or something we are upset about we just don't know the right channels to pass it out you know so most times you see it's put out in a more violent manner so whether they're blocking a gate somewhere or you know or blocking a highway or somewhere blocking a highway somewhere you know or shouting somewhere else or, or something so I, I believe that with civil society i mean i've worked i've worked in development for about two years now and i've seen that civil society has given young people the chance i mean they are Various forums people can join, whether it's like, for example, a member of the Global Shapers Community uh, here in Port Harcourt. And there are several other NGOs, really. And you can start your own NGO, really. I mean, there are several outlets in civil society that gives us a chance to engage, you know, in a more constructive manner. Mm. So you have a, a conference, for example, on something, write a petition, whether you're a pressure group. There are other ways that are more civil, you know, that you can use to request for the right things to be done. Or to even champion and make sure that government does, for example, what budget does, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty much like simple, basic data mining and visualization, but they've used that to put pressure on several public office holders that people are even afraid of them right now, right? So, so it might be something as simple as that, but just using, making sure you have an outlet, you know, to put pressure on people to do the right thing. Once people know that someone is watching them, they will surely, surely, surely sit up. It's when people feel like there's no one to watch them or to call them to other that they that they do things wrongly. So yeah, civil society is a good way. Getting into politics is also another way. Like I said, it's it's one of the ways. It's not the only way, but it's one of the ways you can young people um, can can lead change. And yeah, we are encouraging young people to to get into politics and, and start now. We don't need to wait till 2022 or 2023 before you declare or look for the um, role you want to serve in or even join a political party. Young people are encouraged to actually begin as soon as they can, and the best time is now. Mm. Yeah. On the conversation still zero eight four four six one nine two three zero eight one seven nine two three triple zero two triple zero three triple zero seven or triple zero nine. Still with the issue of politics. Once again, I don't mean to be unfair to you. No, it's fine. But, uh, <laughs> it's fine. Do, do you suppose that uh, you know? I, th I think there there are good politicians and there are bad politicians. Yes, just like anywhere so. else in the world. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the, the, the right set or the right caliber of Niger Delta youth are actively engaged in politics right now, generally yeah. speaking, in the region? Or do yeah. you think that maybe they're elsewhere and not doing that? You'll answer that in a moment. Mean, so you are. Hello, Congressman, you're welcome. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, let's narrow down our <laughs> discussion to ProVC. ProVC is a form of self discipline, whereby you do things one can see without asking questions, both finance or otherwise. That's just a nice one. I love that. All right, good to hear from him, I suppose. Uh, hello, Canvas, and are you welcome? Bajo, good evening. You're welcome, go ahead. My name is Dave Dayong, I'm calling you from Port Harcourt. Go ahead, please. I really want to appreciate you, my brother, in the studio. Uh, you're really doing great. I don't know if you've really interacted with youth in other areas. Like you mentioned, I don't know if you've really interacted with youth from the north. I happened to serve there. Uh, when I was doing my that was as far back 2009, 2009, I, I, I realized, it's time they hear the name Niger Delta Youth 
all the passivists, violent people, kidnappers, killers, you know, things like that. And I get to tell them, no, it's not like this. Even you don't know if you've interacted with them, you will see this kind of yeah. experience, what I'm trying to, yes, you're right. to tell you. Like coming back home, I think we have a whole lot to do. We have a whole lot to do. We need to work. The problem we have is not our leaders. The problem we have is ourselves. The change begins in us. It's not enough to say, yes, we are doing like this. Then coming back home, we are not doing it. That you can see, even in your studio, you can see what plays out. Mention politics. Don't bring anything politics. You will see the youth, they begin to fight themselves. Come online, go to the place you can see. Don't post anything about any politics. This one, is, uh, my uh, house of arrest member, this one is not doing well. See your fellow youth attack you. Hmm. They will attack you, they will abuse you. That thing is not, we've not just started. We have, we have to start. At least we need to do something. Let's gather, I love what you're doing. Let's begin the, the, the process. Begin to talk about talk to mind. It's not enough. Well, like, even in my community where I'm coming from, I come from an oil I'm coming from Omega. I know what is happening there. I know go there you you the youth that need ourselves. All their matter is great 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 to have me, sir. I think I believe we got no, to your I believe we got to the point. Thanks for the contribution. Uh, so yeah. uh, to, to the question I was asking before about political engagement and uh, participation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are the right Generally speaking, not mm. not this is not talking about one particular person or group yeah. of persons. Yeah. Do, you think the, do you think the right set of Nike Delta youths are actively involved right now? Um, I wouldn't say all of them are. Many many young people in Nigeria Delta who are doing positive things often just want to live a quiet life. Most of them sometimes will even prefer to move out of the state, move out of the region to like Lagos or Abuja, you know, to work in other places and just you know just mix in with the crowd. But I would say that if we would really need to see i mean if we if we, if we will see this change that we are desiring and again just to cut myself too some people when they hear about the not too young to run uh, movement or the, or the campaign or all of those kind of things people feel like what we are insinuating is that young people are the best you know they're the best option right so i mean if we get a young person as a president now all our challenges are solved and nigeria is better that's a big lie i mean we, we saw that recently um, the challenge that one of the senators, the young oh, senators the had. the slapping senator. Yeah, I mean, he says a young person, right? Mm. So we're not saying the young person is a perfect choice, but we're saying that if young people, you know, come in with the values and skills, the correct young people, like you said, the right crop, if they come in with the values and skills that they currently have, it will, it will give us a lot of, we'll have a higher chance, <laughs> you know, mm. of getting our country and our region developed. Do we have that right crop currently? I would say we don't have all of it. A lot of work still needs to be done. And the young people who are who are listening, who you know have a desire to to do the right thing, should begin to engage positively, you know, actively in the process of decision making. And gender and development in the Niger Delta encompasses several things, I imagine. But a yeah. very key uh, part of that has to be the the economy as well, yeah. e economic activities, yeah. you know. And there's only so much that government can do. They do have a lot of responsibility, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But no economy of any nation thrives from just what government. on government activities. No, no, no. So what are some of those things that young Niger Johnsons can bring to the table to improve the economic fortunes of the region? I earlier mentioned that we have the highest unemployment rate in the region, right? Our private sector in the region seems to be shrinking, you know, since after the militancy up uprising in a few years. The sector has been shrinking over time. That's mm. why, you know, you have young people who come out of school who don't have any place to, to work, even though they are the ones who don't have the relevant skills. But even there are some people who have the relevant skills but don't have, you know, placements and, and places to work at. I believe that young people need to begin to take the bull by the horn and actually begin to start up businesses, look for solutions to, you know, issues in their communities that we can solve. We... We cannot just rely on looking for a job alone. Mm. There, there are actually no jobs. That's, that's, that's the truth. Going out there you know, and working in the labor market, you notice that most, most companies even don't have enough space. But we have oil companies here. Why can't they just employ all of us? No. <laughs> <laughs> How many oil companies do we even have? Who even have their headquarters here, here in the region? Even when they even bring their headquarters here, how many people can they really employ even? Right. So the, the, the truth is that one sector alone cannot employ all of the young people that we have in the United States region, which is why most of them need to begin, most of us need to begin to think of a way to solve these problems that we see around us. Money is locked in in most of these issues that we have, mm. whether it's in security or what, I mean, all of these things we have around us is opportunity and money tied down for people who can start up businesses. So we have ICT, you know, we have, we have tech, we have all these things on our side, really. We need to begin to think in a different way to use these things to solve, you know, the problems that, that, we, that we see around us. And I believe the private sector is a huge driver of the economy in every part of the world, really. 
when you have an active private sector, America, for example, always cannot play with Silicon Valley because that is what runs the economy of the country, right? D.Y. Jones and all of that. So we need to begin to, th to think of these solutions to problems and build companies out of them. We don't have to wrap it up right now. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking uh, with my guest uh, on the show today uh, on the topic matter. Canvas uh, Champion Series, uh, youths contributing to Nagi Delta Development. My guest, uh, Ebenezer Wicken, a journalist, developing practitioner, working in the Nagi Delta for the past 10 years. Ebenezer, it's been a pleasure having you here today. Thank you so much, Ayo. A reminder that Canvas and Nagi Delta Roundup is brought to you by SPDC. The show comes away again uh, next week, Wednesday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, I'm Adid Dai Ilushakin. If you've got any comments and queries regarding the program, uh, send us a message via social media platforms. Twitter, it's at Canvas on Air. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Canvas on Air. Good evening. Yeah.